I was having concerts, they were sold out, white boys, Mexicans, blacks, and they would do whatever I said. I could tell all those people in the audience to turn around in a circle, and they would do it. I was having love, I mean, I like undeniable been. love. <laughs> and I was scared. I was scared that I would come to a town and I have the, the, the leader of the gang there telling me, what do you need? I was scared, but so was America. So was somebody else, because all of a sudden I had all kind of legal problems. And you have to think about this. I had a clean record for 20 years. A clean record, living in the ghetto, in the gutter, no record. What about my morals then? What about my character then? You know what I'm saying? In two years that I start raising noise, that I start being publicly viewed, I've mm -hmm. had a record. And now it looks like I'm a criminal who has no way of being reformed. But all of these came one after the other. Do you understand? Right. It takes logic. Well, what about, I mean, some of, I mean, that's an, another interesting part of your past. Have you ever been incarcerated before? One, put him in jail. But if you stay there, that you know what I'm saying? I haven't I haven't stayed anywhere. Right. I've been arrested a lot, put in the cell, and they come and get me when I call my lawyer. You know what I'm saying? But I'm an innocent type of guy. <laughs> well, I wanted to bring up, I mean, obviously <laughs> tomorrow yeah, is a is a big day. You're being yeah. sentenced tomorrow. Yeah. And um, you know, we're sitting here in twenty four hours you'll know what you know what the situation's going to be. Are you thinking about the prospect of going to jail? Um First, I was like, I'm not going to jail. I was like, if they try to come get me for something I didn't do, I'm going to open fire. You know what I'm saying? But I can't do that because it's not just me anymore. You know what I'm saying? That's what they expect. If I have to, if God sees it fit for me to spend time in a cell, if he wants my brain to be inside of a cage, if he's brought me so far from hell to put me here, and now he wants me to go to jail, I'll go. You know what I'm saying? If that's what It's amazing. It's amazing his uh let me get off this this <clears throat> It's amazing his mindset because I know so many other people like they've been to church like they go to church like every Sunday or you know at least before corona like they they one of those people who like super religious go to church all the time whatever virtual church whatever <clears throat> and it's always like you better say your prayers you know you know make sure you you pray on it you know but then when they get into a situation after all the years that they live when they get into a situation they're like panicking but and it's like, dang, what happened to all this stuff that you done, you know, you've been preaching about, you've been talking about, you've been telling me to do, and now you at the moment where you have to rely on what, you know, what God is going to do, what's the next move. You got to rely on his plan, you know, and they panic. But Tupac, he said, he done said that he, he got out of hell. He done took him out of the gutter. He done brought him to, to riches, to a place where he actually has a platform, he has power or, or you know, or something. I feel like it, everything is a learning experience and I feel like you go through certain stuff, you know, so you can learn, so you can grow. Let me, let me get back. I, I, I just think it's funny how he has had that short life, that short lifespan and you have people who 50, 60, 70 who cannot stand up for themselves and accept their punishment or accept, uh, you know, what's going on and take it for what it is. And if that's where I'm meant to be, but I don't think so. I don't think so, you know what I'm saying? I don't really believe in my heart that I belong in jail. I don't believe I did anything to warrant me going to jail. Okay. Um, what do you think, if you do go to jail, is to be expected because you are a known personality? I'm going to ask to be put in solitary confinement and I'm going to do push-ups and read books and come out weed-free smoke free and with a degree or some shit, you know what I'm saying? I won't let it stop me, you know what I'm saying? But I'm not going to jail to just parlay. If I went to jail, best believe, it's not like I'm gonna have a problem in jail. I got love there, you know what I'm saying? I got love from, from thugs and the street dudes. And I can go to jail and probably organize a riot, you know what I'm saying? But that's not what I wanna do. If I have to go to jail, I, I don't even wanna be living. I wanna just cease to exist for however long they have me there. And then when I come out, I'll be reborn, you know what I'm saying? I'll be taking less less problems and that my mind will be sharper and the venom will be more potent you know what i'm saying so they shouldn't send me there they should really try to appeal you know it's like you don't throw more gasoline on the fire to put it out mm -hmm. what what about um i mean this is one step and there's some other you know cases that are going to be coming up what has changed for you and you mentioned the last two years is when all everything oh, no. you know it's amazing how some people they think they're doing something to you. They think they're punishing you. They feel like, oh, yeah, I got them now. But they don't realize that people, like real strong-minded people, when they put in tough situations, they overcome. 
they become stronger. Like people don't realize that. And it's so funny that the weak minded people that's like, oh, I got you. They really think they got a one up on you until they actually see like, damn, I really didn't break this man. I really didn't break this woman. Like I said, you know, it was no spot for Tupac. It's not like there was somebody like me before and I, and I moved into the spot so I can ask him how he did it. You know what I'm saying? There was no spot here. Nobody wanted to be, you know, the, the person that thugs and the street people could rally around. Nobody wanted to be that. So when I was that, I couldn't handle it. You know what I'm saying? I couldn't, I could handle it, but not right away. Of course, I had problems. I was making mistakes that anybody would make when you have 14,000 people ready to do whatever you want. You know what I'm saying? When you have all over the country, people waiting to hear what you want to do. You know what I'm saying? This Thug Life Code, we have a code putting order to the violence on the streets. And when they all listening to you, I got people in the penitentiary, you know what I'm saying? Big time OG criminals who are calling me, telling me they want me to lead their movement. I mean, I'm going to have a problem. You know what I'm saying? I'm going to have a small identity crisis here. You know what I'm saying? Because, I've, like I said, I was a, from a single father. You know what I mean? A single mother with no father, no male figure. Now I got every man in America who wants to take an order from me. You know what I'm saying? Wow. Who wants to know what I want to do. Or, you know, still, what's my plan for y'all black and, still, and that makes me scared. But that makes still, me want to rise to the occasion. You know what I'm saying? What makes me want to give my whole life to him. And I will give my whole life to, 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 to this plan that I wow. have for thug life. Now, now that that's how you that's how you supposed to live your life. Like put put your everything, put your all into everything you do. And when he say that it, it, there is no spot, there was no spot for Tupac. Like there's no spot for none of us. There's no spot. It's nobody like you. It's nobody like me. It's no spot. A lot of people they use the excuse like like say for YouTube YouTube for example. Like, a lot of people say, oh, you doing YouTube? There's so many other people that's doing YouTube. But it's nobody like me. And it's nobody like them. I cannot, it's no way that you can replace, like, even twins are not even exactly the same. When you, when you grow up and you go to public schools, like, they, are, they actually teach you the opposite. They actually teach you, you know, that there's nothing special about you. You just like everybody else. You just one of... How many kids, 500, 1,000 kids, or however, however many kids at the school. You just one of them. And the fact that, like, it's 30 kids in the classroom, you just one of. The teacher is talking to all of y'all for, for, for years and years. Like, kids get trained to feel like they are a group. It's no, th nothing that's individual that's special. You know, what, what's, what makes me special? Ain't nobody think I was special this whole time. So now I gotta find something special about myself when that's not how I've been programmed to be. But in reality, yes, we are, we all are special. We all have something different to bring to bring to the table. Whether the, whether it's a uh, whether it's weird, you goofy, you funny, whatever you got locks, whatever. Like, I mean, the the days of feeling like we not special is over. The fact that you were born in you were birthed onto this earth and you actually have a brain and a personality that's just that specialness alone but anyway when you said a code i don't know exactly what do you mean by a code i organized the ogs in the east coast and the west coast and the penitentiaries um to um come up with a set of codes of ethics for for criminals you know like um we, we're going to get be against drive-bys kidnappings attacks on um, people that are not involved with the, with, with the street gang, with the drug trade, or the illegal business at all. You know, all that kidnapping and shooting drive-bys out the car, we're against that. And people who perpetrate that, they have to deal with the consequences when they go to jail, because that's who's going to enforce this code and the thug life that's on the street. It's like we're cleaning up the dirt. I can't change what the dirt that's here, but I can put all this dirt in one corner. You know what I'm saying? Somehow I have some order here. And, and for that, they need to give me a little leg room. You know what I'm saying? Let me need, let me do what I want to do because nobody else is gonna do it. Nobody else wants to do it. But I'm not scared to walk in the middle of Watts, Compton, Chicago, wherever, and sit down with whoever's the OG and say this is what we need to do. Wow, and that's true because honestly, like, who else have we had? Who else have we had that made such a powerful impact? Like, I would say, you know, when I think of Tupac, I kind of, I'm kind of getting a Malcolm X kind of feel. But um, I wouldn't say Martin Luther King because, you know, Malcolm X, he was more of a, a, a 
a commander. Like he like like he said he had he had like thousands of people ready to do anything for him. Like I feel like Malcolm X was that kind of person. Malcolm X was getting so powerful that the people above him was getting jealous and wanted to take him out. It's people who could have that impact, but are they brave enough to have that impact? Because like he said, he 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 had the attention of freaking leaders and gangs and all, all kind of stuff ready to do whatever, ready to ride or die for him. I don't think, I think people would rather blend in and, you know, be on the safe side of things because this is the reason why he got killed. I feel like Tupac can come alive today and say, listen to me. Everybody would drop everything and listen. That's what I feel like. Or at least all the people with sense. I would listen. I'll be scared. Like, where the hell? Where, where, you, where you come from? Where, what's going on? But I would listen. I'd be like, hold up. But, um, so somebody with power like that, you bound to have, if, if he didn't get killed then, I feel like, you know, it was bound to happen because he just had too much power. He had too many people that was willing to listen to him. Like I said, willing to ride or die for him, like at his command, waiting on what he was going to do. And that got to be scary like that. I know that got to be scary. Like I wouldn't want all that pressure on me. I don't like pressure. Don't put that pressure on me. I don't want it. I don't, I don't know. But, um... I mean, I help, I help you out, you know, I help you do do something, you know. But as far as, like, having a commandment of, like, people around the world like that and they waiting on you to make a decision or waiting on your words, whatever words come out your mouth is is the word, is, is what, what they going to live by. That's crazy. But anyways, uh, thank you all for watching my video. Um, if you have not subscribed already, make sure you subscribe. For more videos, it's your girl, just poetic and a mouthpiece.